So because your hand speed is now faster and you've learned to throw the hand speed and the click on this side and on a shallower plane, right, hand behind you, you've started hooking it a little bit too far. So it's still forceful, it's still aggressive, but let's say over 10 feet before, your hands weren't that fast. They weren't really working at all. So let's say you had to throw your hands at 20 miles an hour. Well, you had to throw them at 20 really, really early because they weren't that fast and you needed all that time to get the face square. Well, your hand speeds jumped to 40 miles an hour now. So if you throw it 40 way up here, now you've overdone it. So we want it to click, but what we're saying, we're using the saber now, is instead of throwing it at slower and more behind you, you can now throw it more in front of you because you can trust that your hands are going to get there. Right. So over 10 feet, by the time we get that full 10 feet of downswing, well, you can effectively throw halfway down at 40 instead of throwing it at 20 all the way from the top, yeah. right? So, when I start my swing, yeah. am I starting it with my body? Yeah, so think of it as, like, here, no, really good question. So swing back and stop. All right, so right here we would say, okay, this is where we start the, the triceps. Yeah, this throw, is where I was right? doing it. Yep, so what we're going to do now is we're going to actually just kind of lower the shoulders under, and then we're going to throw it down in here a little bit. So it's not that you're going to pull or turn. It's that you're going to actually kind of lower the chest and the shoulder just down and then kind of snap in this bottom half. Yeah. 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 So hold the... Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So now, there you go. So now what we're doing is we're effectively delaying the snap until the right time. And the muscle groups that we're using to do that is kind of the bigger muscles, core, chest, back, shoulders, kind of delaying, kind of, <clears throat> it's a little bit of a delay. You can picture, you know, a tour player, they look like their shoulders are kind of coming under and then wait, 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 then boom, right? And that's because the hand speed is so fast. So there's a little bit of a crunch, a little bit of a shoulder drop because the hands are fast. So that's what you, that's where you're at. So mm. now you're at tour player level. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so wind up and stop, kind of pause, a little gradual, kind of crunch under, then pop it. There you go. So now what we'll hear, the audio of the saber will sound like it's snapping kind of more where the ball is rather than the exaggerated snap that we had to do back here, which was the early snap. Yeah, there you go. You feel the difference? Oh, yeah, I do. So, so then structurally what happens is... I needed that little <coughs> movement there yeah. to slow me Just down. Just a little bit, yep. Yeah. So now do it in slow-mo, and we'll talk through what happens to the driver now. So you go back, yeah. wind up, a little mini crunch, go slow, slow, slow. So now our hands are going to lead, right? So as you're snapping, we're just going to get to probably this position. So hold that right there. We're going to get to more of that look rather than before when you do the really early snap you would come back here <coughs> snap this out too early then you kind of get in and now you're like this where the club's right. beating your hands to the ball right yep so do the proper one then the new one a little shoulders boom there you go and then this is cool because now what happens is at this moment of impact the face is actually going to send the ball slightly to the left but we're going to get the drop draw instead of the face coming in and doing this and giving us too much of a hook <coughs> yep that's it there you go yeah so what effectively helps with the delay is you're using your bigger muscles to kind of drop underneath yeah there you go then got a little drop boom then you fire it basically just as aggressively as what you've been doing. It's just slightly delayed because the body dropped you down first. There you go. Right? So we changed from... <coughs> yeah. So what happened, though, is 
you overdid it, right? Yeah. So you still have to throw the tricep, you still have to throw it aggressively. And basically, the longer you drop your shoulders into position, the faster your hands better be. So you did this, you were like, boom, 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 shoulder, 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 shoulder. And then maybe you didn't throw it at 40 miles an hour on that one. <laughs> there you go. Boom. There you go. And then, yeah, very good. Let's do that. Yep. Nice, big, nice, big turn. There you go. And kind of delay. Okay. All right. So we're a fraction late. So that's a good thing. We've made the change we need to make. Now you can actually just keep getting more aggressive with your hands. Okay. So you see how this works? You went from 20 miles an hour and not throwing to 40 miles an hour and throwing too early. Right. Now what this gives us the opportunity to do is to get the body in position and go to 50 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour with the hand. So as your body gets in position now, you, there is no problem of, of going too fast. There you go, and then you can really speed it up with that tricep throw. Ooh, there you go. Look how straight that was. <clears throat> that was really good. Yeah, so that's one of my favorite things to say is, if you do this properly, you get further and straighter. <laughs> right. If you just do correct better, you go further and straighter. We, we, we're not compromising because we're doing it correctly. You're going to hit it straighter because you now know your timing. But what it's going to do is unlock the, your capability of throwing your hands faster. Because what would happen, let's say we didn't fix it this way. And we said, hmm, now we have a 40 mile an hour hand speed and we're hooking it. Well, let's just slow it down to 30. Let's slow it down to 20. Well, yeah, it works. It goes straighter, but then you lose all that distance. So by fixing it the right way, we're able to hit it straighter plus further because now instead of having to slow from 40 to 30 to 20 just to get it back in the fairway, now you can actually speed it up and know that it's going in the fairway. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great tip. I mean, this is going to take a little bit of work because it's so fine. It's more fine-tuned, right? Yeah, it is. Yep. Yeah, really good. So really good. Mm, pretty close, pretty close, right? So we got the ball to start a little bit to the left, except it didn't draw back like we were hoping for. So what that means is we did the right thing as far as delaying the snap, but effectively the shoulders dropped and delayed us beyond what we were hoping for. So you, you have a choice. Don't drop your shoulders as long or as early or as much, or throw your hands as hard as you can while doing this. So that's the one I want you to do because that gives us a chance to hit it even further. There you go. So once you drop the shoulders to create that delay, don't hold back on the hands. You gotta fire them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, so that's, that's, that's the opposite. So you have hand speed, right? Early hand speed, made it hook. Well, we got rid of your slice. So now we're adding a little bit of body back in. If we add too much body and we take all the hands out, well, and then we're back over here. <laughs> You'll get it. Yep. Yeah, think of it this way, Glenn. Think of it as, like, go back and stop, right? <clears throat> Before, right away you were doing hands. Right. Now... You're crunching, let's call it a foot. Well, that's too far. You can crunch three inches and boom, right? So it's a mini drop and then fire the hands. Because if you drop your shoulders too far, now then that's how we overdo it. Yeah, I like that a lot. That's much better timing. So it's a mini drop and aggressive hands. <laughs> you dropped too far. Mm -hmm. That mini drop is... That's the fine-tuning part. Troubled. 
So, go back to no drop. Just do hands again. Throw the tricep. Yeah, there you go. Just throw the tricep right from the beginning. Okay, now we got it hooking over there to the right. Yep. So in, yeah, so in the relationship of, let's call it a 100 yard dispersion, right? <laughs> We're only dealing with a few degrees. That's the problem is it's a mini change that's causing a big exaggeration out there. So yeah, that's, that's where the saber comes in handy because then instead of thinking about all the mechanics of like, I got to drop three inches and throw it. That's a little too much for the brain to handle. Think of, I'm just going to create a, an audible snap. But instead of creating an audible snap early, I'm going to create it a fraction later. So just snap your driver a fraction later. That's all you have to think about timing-wise. Try to just snap it a little bit later. Just a little later, yeah. You want to make sure when you're here, you look here. There you go. That was a nice straight ball. Not like this, here. Mm-hmm. I felt like just, maybe just the image of doing it just a little slower is, or a little bit later. A little later, mm-hmm. It's probably not slower, later. Right. So if you're looking at, you know, you got your saber and you're working on this, you're thinking, how do I, how do I make this become an athletic kind of intuitive feel rather than a, a conscious brain work? That's too much. So if you're thinking, okay, I got my saber, I go to the top, I wind up here. This would be a snap that's like waist high. That would be a big hook now because right. it gets way early. So if you think, okay, well, I'm going to get it to snap kind of maybe like right as it passes your left leg, maybe that's late enough. If it snaps all the way out in front of you, that's probably too late, right? Gotta be it's got to be there. kind of maybe by the left leg, somewhere in that area. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, so I would have, if you had saber in hand, I would have said you probably snapped basically right in front of you. Right. So try a couple where you get a nice big turn, let that ball set in the saber. Let it set. Now, snap it kind of over here. There. Fraction earlier than that even. Let's go a little earlier than that. There you go. So that to me was a baby draw. That timing. The first one, a little baby fade. Right? So... That's how we want to assess it. Let's try a couple more and then maybe we'll switch it up and go do some uh, short, game. short game. Okay. That was good. Yeah, I just hit pretty good. You got any questions? There you me? go. Uh, that was a little late. Try again. Yeah, that was, uh, that was perfect. I like that one. Yeah. Hey, 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 look at you. That was really nice. Nice and straight. <clears throat> so just like our conversations, we, we get a little a little uh, cerebral, right? Because we have to kind of understand and conceptualize what's going on. But then we have to turn it into a feel. Like that. You know what? To break me of the slicing and everything, it took a little bit of exaggeration. Mm -hmm. You have to exaggerate it to the point where you can feel what's going on yeah no that's a that's a good point yeah i mean you gotta because if you're too close you don't can't feel you don't know what's going on physics to solve problems yeah a lot of times we think of limiting cases what happens in this extreme oh yeah what happens in that extreme yeah to make it look like if your solution makes sense yeah yeah you look at your solution and you say okay does it work for this extreme if mm. it doesn't because you know that's the way it's got to turn out. Right. If it doesn't work that way, then your equation's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And same thing with the other extreme. Yep. So, yep. No, that's exactly right. Okay. Yeah, pretty good. 
right? If we were splitting hairs on that, we would say you're ba basically a, snapped at a millimet, uh, millisecond early and the face turned. You, but You know what? And I think I'd rather be a millisecond early yeah. than a millisecond late. Yes. Because I don't like that stuff. Yeah, I agree. Um, and that's how we all play. I mean, that's basically, if you think about, like, a person that plays a fade on purpose, yeah. they strike it really solidly. Like, Jack Nicklaus in his day would step up, and he always wanted that ball to drop to the right, just fall to the right. He was basically playing golf a millisecond late. Right? You see someone like a Rory McIlroy who, who hits that beautiful draw. Well, he's playing golf a millisecond early. That's how that's how it, you pick do one. do it consistently so you know where you're going. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But a millisecond early gives me a little bit more distance. Yeah, it does. Right? Mm-hmm. It does because it gives that club face a chance to, obviously the physics of it is it gives that face a chance to de-loft right. versus add loft. So that's where your distance basically comes from. It's not so much a biomechanical <clears throat> feat of athleticism that makes it go further. It's the collision with the, the flat surface and the ball is that it's and if that's a 10 degree driver and you're a millisecond early it's now hitting the ball at 9.75 and not 10 right whereas if you hit it a fraction late it's hitting it at 10.25 so the added loft and the height actually reduces your distance whereas the d loft makes it go further yeah. Yeah. If your if your longest distance is with a ten degree, yeah, then you want less of it to go upward and more of it to go down downfield. Yep. Yep. Do you want me to hit more, or should I? Go um. Go, no, nah, I think you got it. Do you have anything oh, to? I understand the problem. Yep. I understand the problem. I'll have to think in terms of. I like. I mean, I like it if I could do the. Yep. The drop a little bit. Yeah. Before I do that. Mm -hmm. I like that because it stays more consistent with the ear to ear. Yes, yes. Um, it's a yeah. more consistent movement with the ear to ear. Yeah. I just can't seem to get the timing. Yeah. Of it right no, now. and I'll, I'll show you. <clears throat> I'll show you why that is worth it. Do that again. Okay. <clears throat> Swing up and stop. Here's another reason why it's worth it. All right. If I just put a little resistance here, go ahead and do a little drop. See how much power there is. Oh yeah. Because you you could use your core muscles chest muscles even just body mass kind of doing yes. that there's just a little bit more but it's got to accompany be accompanied by those fast hands because if you're dropping and the hands aren't kicking in then it's not going to help right then it's going to peel you back out that way exactly yeah i don't want to get back to it. i don't want to <laughs> go back to the beginning of my lesson right right uh, yeah no you're doing great all the stuff checks out grip posture um I've... the alignment question now we can you know it's logical if your ball's curling a little bit too far to the right then aim left well if you're going to play the game a millisecond early and play the draw, it's perfectly okay to be five degrees to the left because that's how you play the game. Aim five degrees left, hit it a millisecond early, play the draw. That's perfectly okay to do that. The problem happens when you have when you're hitting it not a millisecond early, but you're hitting it a full second early, and you're playing this huge hook. So you have to aim 45 degrees over here. Now we're we're. We've gone too far where there's no gain there. There's no benefit there. There's not a, there's not a wide enough open golf course for us to hit it, right. <laughs> hit it out of here and, and, and curl and, it and back. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I know we <coughs> wanted to kind of work on some short game a little bit. So let's um, let's do that.